Hi, Dr. Craig. A lot of the different um, things that people say to go against penal substitutionary atonement, they'll say that it wasn't present directly after the apostolic era and that it was created by later legal philosophers like Anselm and others. Um, do you find any support that in the patristic literature that there were actually um, people directly after the apostolic era that believed that penal substitutionary atonement was actually at the core of the atonement? Um, yes, there are uh, abundant references in the church fathers to penal substitution. Um, let me find an example from Eusebius's demonstration of the gospel um, to quote to you. But let me, as I look for it, let me say that's also why I grounded this doctrine in the New Testament's use and employment of Isaiah 53. Even if the church fathers somehow overlooked penal substitution in their espousal of ransom theories and Christus Victor theories, that's irrelevant if this doctrine is firmly rooted in the New Testament and in Isaiah 53. But in fact, the church fathers didn't overlook it. One of the surprising things that I discovered in my work on the atonement is how seriously misrepresented classical atonement theorists are in the secondary literature. And this is just one aspect of it. The idea that the church fathers were myopically focused upon Christus Victor or ransom theories is just demonstrably false. So let me read to you what Eusebius says in the uh, demonstration of the gospel, uh, chapter 10, section 1. The Lamb of God was chastened on our behalf and suffered a penalty. He did not, uh, pardon me, and suffered a penalty he did not owe, but which we owed because of the multitude of our sins. And so he became the cause of the forgiveness of all our sins because he received death for us, and transferred to himself the scourging, the insults, and the dishonor which were due to us, and drew down on himself the apportioned curse, being made a curse for us. And what is that but the price of our souls? And so the oracle says in our person, by his stripes we were healed, and the Lord delivered him for our sins." Here Eusebius quotes Isaiah 53 and Galatians 3.13 about Christ being made a curse for us and clearly affirms, I think, um, or anticipates penal substitution. 